The history of aviation owes much to the expanse of firm sand between Southport and Formby. In 1911, Mr. R.A. King took off in his farm and pusher biplane. In the same year, W.G. Higginbottom landed at Southport with Britain's first airmail. He had brought a bag of 40 letters, franked aerial posts, all the way from Freshfield, a distance of five miles. An area of sand on Birkdale Beach, marked by a fence and a windsock, was used as a landing strip. An eight-seater de Havilland Dragon biplane of 1934 briefly ran pleasure flights from here in the 1960s. The first lifeboat station in the British Isles was established at Formby in 1776 by Liverpool Town Council. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution took it over in 1894, and we see the last launch of the John and Henrietta in 1916. Mounted soldiers pulled the boat into the sea. The local coalmen who launched the boat in peacetime with their cart horses were away on war service. The lifeboat station was closed soon afterwards and never reopened. In 1886, the worst lifeboat disaster in history occurred at Southport. The German bark Mexico was stranded off Ainsdale, and a total of 27 Southport and St Anne's crewmen lost their lives. The crew of the Mexico were rescued by the Lytham lifeboat. Southport Lifeboat Station closed in 1925, but reopened in 1988 using a rigid inflatable craft. It is now operated by Southport Offshore Rescue Trust and is independent of the RNLI. The Formby Lifeboat House was later used as a cafe before being demolished. We look in at the 1927 Formby Gala and Sports.
they don't make them like that anymore. Over the years, various developments have taken place on the land left by the retreating sea. In 1931, the Lancashire Cotton Queen, Lois Heath of Tilsley, in a royal blue velvet cloak with white collar and cuffs, was accompanied by the Mayor of Southport, Councillor Albert Peplow, at the opening of the ornamental bridge which crosses the lake. She was presented with an inscribed silver casket containing a pair of scissors to cut the tape and open the bridge. The ceremonial party proceeded across the bridge to the sea bathing lake where thousands of people from Lancashire cotton towns were gathered. The Cotton Queen District finalists, representing the areas which were home to the spinning and weaving processes of the industry. Aided by local mannequins, they paraded a collection of garments made from Lancashire fabrics.
Pleasureland was opened in 1922. The rickety roller coaster moved sufficiently slowly for the passengers to retain their hats. Maxim's Flying Machine, built in 1906, provided an experience which was absent from the designer Hiram Maxim steam-powered biplane of 1894, which had failed to get off the ground. Pleasure Land in the 1930s. About this time there were three roller coasters, the Scenic Railway, the Caterpillar and the Figure of Eight which was later replaced by the Cyclone Coaster. The Lakeside Miniature Railway, originally Llewellyn's Railway, was built in 1911. It is the oldest 15-inch railway in Britain and now runs from Pleasureland to the Ocean Plaza. The trains were originally hauled by steam locomotives but these have now been replaced by diesel engines. Some of the passenger rolling stock came from the Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway, which operated in Battersea Park in 1951 for the Festival of Britain. The locomotives of that railway were designed by Roland Emmett, but are not present on the Southport line. Back in Southport, guests arrive at the Prince of Wales Hotel for a charity ball organised by the Old Boys of Southport College, a privately run school.
In 1927, we are at the fourth annual Great Flower Show in Victoria Park, billed as the largest horticultural show in the world, second only in status to Chelsea. The landscape gardens are created in the few weeks before the show opens, and the Great Marquee houses professional displays of flowers, vegetables and fruit. Southport Flower Show has been held each year from 1924, except for a break during the Second World War. It's amazing what can be created by clipping hedges. The art of topiary at its very best. Rotten Row, a floral display adjoining the showground. Horse jumping was a regular feature, as were sheepdog trials. An electric car in Lord Street in Edwardian times. The Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Terminus, Chapel Street Station, a hive of activity. The station was redesigned in 1970 and fronted by a retail development. Moving on to the late 1930s, we see the Southport Corporation buses in their red and cream livery. Life's Radio in London Street. From the television sets later seen in the windows, this must have been post-war. Television was a novelty, and not everyone had their own set. Lord Street Bandstand of classical design stood in front of the municipal buildings from 1913 to 1969. Hello folks, I'm Red Rum, but then you know that because I'm famous. Won the Grand National three times on the trot. Well, it was more of a gallop really. Came second twice, but I don't talk about that. When all you lot get out of my way, 
I'll go down to the town hall where the mayor is waiting for me. By the way, that is mayor, M-A-Y-O-R, not M-A-R-E. I thought I would make that clear. Gosh, the going's a bit hard here. I'd known better. Give me the turf at Aintree any time. I'm going to be granted the freedom of the borough, or freedom of the sands, really, for I did all my training on Southport Beach. Golly, there's more bumping and boring going on here than on a race course. Come on, let me through. Thanks, Ralph. So that's what it was all about. A bit of paper. I've had enough of this, so come on, jockey, get me out of here. I want to get my hooves up. These shoes are killing me. Ah, peace at last.